Sheboygan teen struck by car recovering. Minute mark armed robbery under investigation. Absentee ballot extension halted by federal court. These stories and more are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, September 29th, 2020. With 11 new cases of COVID-19 confirmed in Sheboygan County on Saturday, 51 on Sunday, and another 40 cases confirmed on Monday. 102 new cases have been added to the pandemic total, where, which now reads 1,686. 45 persons have recovered since Friday, yielding an active caseload of 192. The highest 198 were recorded on July 30th among the active cases. 13 are hospitalized, matching the high recorded previously on September 11th, 23rd, and 24th. No deaths were recorded in Sheboygan County since the 16th was reported this past Friday. As a percentage of all test returns received since Friday's daily update, 8% were positive. Wisconsin now has 19,560 active cases of COVID-19. 16.6% of the 117,588 cases confirmed so far. The 1,726 new cases is the smallest daily total since September 22nd, and the first under 2,000 total since the 23rd. That figure peaked at 2,817 on Saturday, and 21.9% of the test returns since yesterday were positive, after peaking at 27.6% percent on Sunday and the seven day average was 17.9 percent. 47 more persons entered hospitals with confirmed cases of COVID-19 realizing the state the patient total in the state to 571. 166 of those are in the ICU. Another 210 persons are hospitalized with still unconfirmed cases of COVID-19, and 361 persons are on ventilators. Reports of COVID-19 in Sheboygan schools is becoming a near daily event as another two cases in the classroom were reported over the weekend. On Saturday, Sheridan school families were notified by school district and county health officials. A positive case was identified and contacted tracing is underway to identify any student or staff who may have come close to the contact with that individual. On Sunday, a similar announcement was sent to families of South or students at Sheboygan North High School, which had previously reported the district's first case of COVID-19 on September 8th. No change in cohorts or class structures were announced with any weekend school this week. And cleaning and disinfecting the areas involved was being completed to control the spread of disease. A federal court has put a hold on a judge's extension of the window by which absentee ballots will be accepted in Wisconsin. In a Sunday meeting, of course, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, a judge's panel put a stay on the ruling by Judge William Conley that would have lengthened that amount of time absentee ballots would have been accepted until November. That is so that the Seventh Circuit of the Supreme Court can issue a proper ruling in the case. Democrats want the state to handle what more time he has and what is expected to be a number, a record number of absentee ballots this year. 
14-year-old boy was injured when he was hit by a car whilst driving across the South Business Drive in Sheboygan Monday night. Sheboygan police say the incident occurred around 7 p.m. and a group of teens were crossing the road, heading east in the front of the Quick Trips on the Sheboygan South Side. When they got out of the median, the one of the vehicles in the northbound lane of traffic stopped for the teens, obstructing the new the view of the other northbound officials. The teen was taken to the Memorial Hospital to be treated, and the injuries are believed to be serious. An armed robbery at 5 p.m. Saturday is being investigated by Sheboygan Police. The incident happened at Minute Mart at 10th and Geely Avenue, where the suspect approached the register, pulling out a purchased gun, but then produced what is believed to be a weapon and demanded cash from the cash register. The suspect described as a Mac, a black male late teens to late 20s wearing a Black Panther t-shirt, then filled the area with an undisclosed amount of cash and remains at large. If you have any information, you are encouraged to contact either the Sheboygan Police Department or Sheboygan County Wide Crime Stoppers at 1877 cuff them. Again, that's 1877 cuff them. The Sheboygan Water Utility is facing the need to rethink its proposal for a new raw water improvement. Protect as cost figure have come in in significantly higher than expected. How much higher the $29 million is not clear, but a recent meeting of the Board of Water Commissioners, Joe Trueblood, reported that the utility is already looking at a number of cost reduction items. The project centers on the need to build a new primary water intake, pipeline and pumping station, and the community one that would supply ample water be less susceptible to winter ice buildup and last about 100 years. Plans are also for the new pumping station to supply raw water or remove plant location in the future. Major re-engineering -engineer of the plants is now beating down to reduce the cost, such as an eliminary, eliminating an emergency backup painting. It took a long a rescue for the building footprint and moving the location. Studying Studies also show that one of the two existing intakes the one built in 1919 remains serviceable by the next 10 to 20 years, but plans for its replacement must be made. And while a 30-year-old drinking water loan from the state could help soften the impact, commissioners were told that eventually rates will have to re increase the, to recover the costs. And finally, it is usually a gathering of hundreds of people each year when the United Way kicks off the annual fundraising campaign and Day of Caring. But this is, of course, is 2020 when virtual is the norm, and that will be the case on Thursday when most will attend via Zoom. United Way of Sheboygan County have the coordinated events across the county to be set in the motion beginning at 8 a.m. October 1st when the executive director Kate Bayer officially launches the activities. The day includes a noon seating to discuss those 34 percent of the Wisconsin households classify as assist limited income constrained 
employed who struggle to access life's basic necessities. Also included in the Thursday events are acts of kindness challenges for all ages, a wish list of items that help nonprofits to do their work and volunteer, opportunities that can be done virtually. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next week for more local news and stories on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.